In this video, we'll take a look at end of day behavior in more detail and also look at some typical ways users extend this behavior in practice to bring more flexibility to their system. As we've seen in the quick start, when the end of day is run, the ORDB initiates the data saving process, persisting all the intraday data to disk and purging the data from its local tables. Now the steps involved in doing this are, firstly, the ticker plant lets any subscribers know it's past midnight by sending the .u.endofday message to them. And this is part of the u.endofday function we triggered in the quick start, if you remember. Next, the ORDB will write the data down to disk. And this functionality is defined in the .u.end function defined in the ORDB script, which you might've noticed. And at a high level, this code uses inbuilt functions in the .q namespace, which save the table to a location we specify. It clears the table in memory and then also sends a reload message to our process so that the new data is mapped there, available for users to query. Then back on the ticker plan process, the current data is incremented by one, which is stored in the .u.d global variable. Then it safely closes that connection to the current ticker plant log file, generating a new ticker plant log file for the new date and establishing a connection to the newly created file. There's also some code in there that covers checks if the date's actually okay to save down or if it includes any dates that are older and it would throw an exception if that case occurred. So that's our basic end of day functionality at a high level. Now, what else might we want to add in a real life KDB architecture or system? The first thing we might wanna do is change how we're saving our data and the format we're saving it down as specifically. So in the standard vanilla setup or basic setup, we have tables saved as partitioned by date. And this is the most common way users might save their data down in a time series use case, but it's not the only option available. There are other options available like saving as a splayed table, as a single flat file, or even segmenting data across multiple partitions. And the differences between these types is covered in depth in our data on disk module on the Academy, which I'll link below. So changing to use one of these other methods would typically depend on the size of your data and how fast it's growing. Um, and if you're in a RAM constricted environment, for example, or if you need higher performance, you might consider upgrading your partition data to a segmented table to parallelize access. Alternatively, if you have small tables of reference data, you probably want to save those down as flat files or maybe splayed tables. And in that .u.end function is where you can modify the behavior by telling the ORDB which tables you would like to save in which format. So you can have some partition tables, some segmented, some splayed, etc. So typically this might mean swapping out that default function we see here, which is .q.hdpf for more customized use of various functions in the .q namespace like .q.dpft, .q.en and .q.par. And I'll link to the documentation on what each of those do below as well. A second way a user might want to customize their end of day might be when they have very large data volumes and your ORDB is not able to service user queries as the same time as it's writing that down to disk at the end of the day. So what some people need to do is have multiple ORDBs. So one of which is concerned with writing the data to disk and the other one can still service those user queries. Then our gateway can point to whichever ORDB is the available one. So the end users don't need to be concerned with which one's up or aware of which one is available. A third useful thing some people do is add email notifications. So triggering an email to be sent when the end of day is complete, for example, just notifying users that their data has now been successfully written to disk and there's been no issues with that. A fourth custom feature might be having a function that connects to another process to do data quality checks after the end of day. So once your data has been persisted, you could have a separate process that is connecting to the HDB one, reading the data and checking the quality is actually good. And for example, this could be looking for gaps in market data, or you could be checking if your price has dropped unusually. And this could be flagged to users, again, in an email or a report to check that it's definitely in the data and it's valid, or maybe that might highlight that it's a fault of the upstream system for further investigation. So that's obviously quite sophisticated checks, but more production systems and bigger systems might implement that. Now, another thing someone might do is adjust their end of day functionality to be able to handle backfills, which basically means loading historical data, and that would be handling multiple dates. So for example, if we had some historical data that was in a CSV file, and we wanted to load this to our ticker plan process, we could adjust our functionality so that they would be appended historically when we write down instead of overriding our data. 
and that way our end of day process can handle fresh data and older dates. Now the last custom functionality I want to mention is intraday write downs which is very typical thing people might implement to manage their memory better. And our standard approach we've seen so far can be limited by your available RAM if your data volumes are getting too big because you're going to need extra RAM to also query the data on top of what RAM you're needed just to have the data in memory. And the extra amount will depend obviously on a use case basis and on the amount of queries that are actually being run on the data. So a common solution is writing down some of the data from the ODB at different points throughout the day rather than waiting for the end of day. Therefore, you're freeing up the RAM throughout the day. Now, there is an excellent white paper on this topic of intraday write downs specifically, which I'll link below for further reading. And it shows examples of actually implementing this on your system in practice. That's just a few of the ways that end of day functionality can be customized. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how automating daily data processing tasks and streamlining your operations can make your system more effective. Now, customizations that you decide to choose, if any, will be highly personal to your own system performance needs and what your users want. That's it for this video on your custom end of day functionality. Try the quiz to test your knowledge before moving on to the rest of the modules.